Now, Deb, you've designed these workouts so that people could do them at the gym, but also really quite nice and easy to do them at home. What sort of equipment do people need? Ideally, something like a yoga mat, but most people have carpet or even a rug at home or a mat, so it's fine to do on the floor. I've done some exercises with a Swiss ball. A lot of people have a Swiss ball at home. And we're going to, a bit later on, use some of the blocks, but you can even just use a stair or even a telephone book. It's fantastic. A lot of people, you're right, do have Swiss balls at home, but I think one thing that's quite confusing is what sizes to choose because there are a different variety of sizes. How do we know? Because you're sitting on a smaller one than me. Ideally, you want, if you're buying a Swiss ball, you want to get a Swiss ball so when you're sat on, your knees are at a 90-degree angle. Now, there are exercises that you do when it's easier to have a bigger ball or more difficult to have a bigger ball and vice versa. But essentially, for the majority of exercises, and if you're using the Swiss ball at home as a chair, you want to have that 90 degree angle. As a general rule, we tend to say if you're around 5 foot to 5 foot 5, you'd want 55 centimetre Swiss ball. About 5 foot 5 to 6 foot, 65 centimetre. And above 6 foot, 75 centimetre. So the next group of exercises that you've prepared for us are for the hourglass and the banana, or the more athletic body shape. Obviously the hourglass is quite different being curvy through the chest and hips with a smaller waist from an athletic body shape, but Deb's actually recommended very similar exercises. Why is that? Well, I combine the hourglass and the banana shape because if you've got the hourglass and you've got that lovely curvy shape, but you might want to just retone everything just to tighten it all up slightly. Whereas whether you've got the banana shape, then you're very straight, but quite often you create wanting a little bit more shape. So the same exercises work just to balance out the proportions. So essentially both for the hourglass and for the banana they're full body workouts but just targeting everywhere a little bit of arms a little bit of legs a little bit of chest abdominals back and bottom okay this is the dive bomb press up so you're going to work the chest area through the front but also really strong through the back of the arms you want your belly button resting into the middle of the ball and then walking the hands forward so the ball is just below the waist. Don't come too far forwards with this one. Then as you look at your hands, they should be directly below the shoulders. Have the thumbs in a line and the fingertips point to a triangle that goes in front. Your nose starts between your fingers and then as you inhale, keeping the body as still as you can, bring the body down to the floor. Exhale, bring it up. So if you look where my nose goes, it starts between my hands and then comes about 20, 30 centimetres in front. So you get a really good workout into the back of the arms. This is a scapular draw exercise. It's a fantastic exercise for everyone, whether you're an athlete, whether you sit and work at a desk before you do an upper body workout in the gym. What it does is it just restabilizes your lower back muscles, your internal back muscles, so that when you perform the exercises, they're using the core muscles as well as your big muscles that sit on top. So it lessens the chance of any injury. What you need to do is just rest your arms down so you're not using any of the neck muscles. And I call it just W arms. So your elbows are down by your waist, your arms are up by your side. If you just look at the side, you'll see that your wrists sit in front of your elbows quite naturally. Keeping your elbows where they are, you need to press back. So when I'm doing that, I'm taking my forearms and my hands back as far as I can over my elbows. In doing that, I feel a tightness between my shoulder blades. This is quite a difficult exercise, but it's really good for the back of the arms. What you need to do is essentially you're sitting onto your hands with your fingertips pointing down towards your knees. So I'm just placing one hand there, place the other hand, and sit down. Then from there, squeezing back through my shoulder blades, opening out through the chest. So I'm not doing this position, which a lot of people try and do. So you want to have a good stable frame through the upper body. Roll forward slightly on the ball, walk the toes forward slightly, and then bring your bottom off. This is often the worst bit of the movement. Some find it quite scary to do. 
keeping you locked through the upper body, slowly bend your elbows back and then pressing out. It's great for shoulder stability and building up shoulder strength, but also fantastic for the back of the arms. Okay, this exercise is for your bottom. You'll also get a little bit of strength through the lower back muscles, a little bit of work through the back of the legs as well. You need to put your belly button at the top of the ball. So lying onto your front, my belly button goes to the centre, so I'm just resting. You can rest my toes down to the floor, I'm resting on the fingertips. Then, just squeeze your bottom and raising up. What people tend to do wrong with this exercise, they come too far forwards and they're using momentum to squeeze the legs up, which is working my lower back, but it's also not too good for your lower back. So bring it back to the centre of the board, so you've got a good straight back, and then squeezing up and releasing. Once you've done a few, just rest back, hug the ball, it's really nice, it helps to rest off through your back muscles. And you can even just roll from side to side. And then it's quite a good exercise to do a second set. So bring yourself to the same position, and this time widen the legs. So as you come out and you're squeezing the legs out to the side, you'll find it working into your bottom a lot more. If anyone doesn't like resting onto their hands, there's no problem resting onto your fists. Again, you can do between about 10 to 20 of these reps, so you get a good workout in the muscles without it hurting. And again, when you finish, just roll back and just round over the ball. Okay, the first exercise is the side bend. It's for waist definition. So you need to lie sideways onto your mat, slight bend in the knee, and some people tend to find it uncomfortable, so you can just roll the mat underneath the elbow. Keep the elbow close into the waist so there's not too much pressure through the shoulder joint. Tighten through your waist muscles. As you breathe out, raise the hips up and lower down. And just raising up and down. Make sure you work with the breath because it helps tighten through those muscles through the waist, help control the movement. As you advance with this exercise, you can hold it in the raised position and extend the legs out. But just be careful if you advance too soon, it does put a lot of pressure through the shoulder joint. Another exercise for the abdominal area, you want to lie face down on the ball and you're walking the legs out. So resting onto the hands, make sure you press the back of the fingers down into the floor so the weight's not into the heel of the hand, which can be quite uncomfortable. Holding it flat, relaxing through your shoulder blades, not bunching into your neck muscles. As you exhale, you want to draw in through your abdominals, pulling your bottom up towards the ceiling. So breathing out. Inhale and release out. As you progress this exercise, just walk the hands further out and just keeping the legs straight, pull up. When you've done, just carefully roll it back. This exercise is called the sternal glide. It's quite a hard exercise, but it's fantastic for shoulder strength and chest strength, and just generally in that upper arm area. Also, you're using your abdominal core strength in order to maintain the position. So you're gonna roll forward, walking the hands out, and you only come as far out as you can maintain that core stability. So if you find as you walk out, you drop through your abdominals, and you're sagging through your lower back, don't walk out so far, keep your abdominals tight and get used to being in that position. The further most you can come out for this exercise is you can walk all the way out into a present position. 
But essentially, I'd probably try it about halfway, first of all, to see how you're doing. From there, when you're in that press-up position, as you inhale, you stretch back, really elongating through the body, and as you exhale, bring the body weight forward, back into that press-up position, keeping your shoulder blades pulled down the spine, so you're not losing the control in the neck muscles and through the abdominals. So keeping that firm control, inhale back, and exhale, bring the body weight forwards. There's a further progression for this, which is for the triceps. You really notice a difference if you work in your triceps differently and for any imbalances. But again, it's very hard to do. So inhale, stretch back. Then you drop the elbows to the floor, bring the body weight forwards, back over towards the hands and pushing up. Inhale back, bring the elbows down, pull the body weight forward and press up. What some of you might find, if you're good at doing the exercise, is you notice your imbalance. So you're in this position and then your weaker side comes up after your dominant side. So it's fantastic for correcting that because you can really work at keeping your elbows tight together. So when you're in that back position, bring it down, bring the body weight forwards and squeeze up through the back of the arms. And then just walk yourself back. And resting over the ball. A nice way just to stretch off the muscles after this one. Just bringing the palms up to the ceiling and just stretch the body weight forwards. So you're pushing the fingertips forwards, your sitting bones, your bottom goes backwards. And just let the head sit down between the arms. This is the cycle step. Like the crossover, this is great for picking up that flabby area through the inside of the knees and for your pelvic hip stability. So just for complete reshaping of the leg muscles. What you need to do is either on a low step or a block or the telephone books like I am, place your hands onto your hips and just about stabilizing on one leg. Keeping your hips level, staying lifted through your pelvic floor muscles, you're gonna slowly lower down and press up. This is the start of the exercise. If you can go, do that quite stable, then bring the toe down in front, drag the foot along the floor and bring it up. It's like a one leg bicycle cycle. The main things to remember is the direction of the knee. It helps improve knee stability. What you don't want to find is you're rocking in and out. So they're really good to do in front of a mirror. So you're just bending down and coming up. The other thing to look for is that you don't drop through the hips. So make sure you're working this knee at the leg that's on the block. So going down and cycling. If I was doing this, I'd probably progress it slightly higher, just to advance the move, but I wouldn't really go higher than that. So that's about my sort of lower area of my shin that I'm going to, just below my calf muscle. That's about as high as I would go. I'm lowering down and cycling round. If I went any higher, I'd start dropping through my hips, which is a long exercise. This exercise is great for the inner thighs. It's also really, really good for that abdominal control. You want to lie behind your Swiss ball, placing your knee on top of the Swiss ball. You can even do this on a block, so it's slightly lower down. As I'm pressing down with this top leg, I can feel it tightening through my abdominal area. And then from there, I'm squeezing up and raising my lower leg. So I'm squeezing the two legs towards each other, but feeling a really tight contraction through my abdominals as well. If you don't want to hold your head up, it's fine just to rest it down. But make sure you breathe out as you bring the leg up so you get that perfect. Like the other leg exercises, you can build up to about 20 repetitions of this, so you get a really fatigue through the muscles.